So today we're going to talk about some gas shielded flux core and some of the most common issues for wormhole porosity. So what you guys just watched is a video on uh, some improperly stored electrodes. We had man cub leave some wire out for an excessive amount of time here in the Florida elements. And during that time it's absorbed quite a bit of humidity I would imagine. Uh, so we went ahead and welded that to show you guys exactly the outcome of improperly stored electrodes. So let's dive into this. We're going to show you what wormhole porosity is and how to avoid it. All right, so let's talk about wormhole porosity or gas marks or chicken tracks, worm tracks, uh, whatever they're referred to in your area. So basically what that is, these little striations in here where the nitrogen is escaping that molten metal and rising up in there and causing this little surface discontinuity here, very unappealing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and dive into some of the additional causes of this and how we can go about fixing that and hopefully avoiding it altogether. All right guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap out this old wire. Um, typically, if this was good wire, I would just re-spool it back on. Uh, but you know, since it's, it's trash wire anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and clip it here and get rid of it. So now I've got some SelectArc 730 045 gas shielded wire. I'll go ahead and throw this back on here and get this set up. Always make sure that the, uh, the cast of your wire is going the right way toward the direction of the rollers. If I was to roll this over top and feed it through here, I'd end up having some feeding issues. So just make sure you got your wire oriented the proper direction. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and run some brand new clean electrode that's been properly stored. We're gonna run the same settings. Uh, we're gonna be using the ESOB Rebel 285, 450 inches a minute on the wire feed speed, 25.5 volts and we have about 40 CFH on a bottle of 7525 here in the back. So same settings, we're just going to show you the difference between properly stored electrode and improperly stored electrode and uh, I mean the, dis the difference is going to speak for itself. So we'll go ahead and show you. We'll go ahead and chip this off and if all goes well uh, we should have the results we're looking for. All right guys, so the results speak for themselves. We got the same machine settings, uh, same joint configuration, weld type, material thickness, uh, same weld size, and properly stored electrode, you know, no wormhole porosity, nice clean tight bead. Over here, uh, full of porosity and wormhole porosity. So it looks like it absorbed, you know, quite a bit of uh, contaminations, you know, over the years that it's been sitting out on the shelf. So you just seen us run a, a good weld with properly stored electrode, proper contact tip to work distance, and the appropriate settings. Now we're gonna start breaking this apart a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a, um, a demo on a contact tip to work distance that is too short. Okay, unlike short circuit MIG, with this flux core wire, be it self-shielded or gas shielded, you need a much longer stick out, okay? And that's because that flux on the inside of that wire is gonna need time to preheat, so that way when it hits that puddle, it can go ahead and do its job. It's in a fluid state at that point. If you don't give it that, that stick out and all those ingredients from that flux are going in there cold, they're not gonna be able to activate and do their job. All right, so we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna really exaggerate this and, and kind of bury that wire right up in there, real short contact tip to work distance. And with any luck, we should get some wormhole porosity. All right, let's take a look under the hood. Oh yeah, there it is. So as you can see, we've got several areas right here, wormhole porosity, and that's from an improper contact tip to work distance. Like I said, I really buried it in there as almost if I was doing like a short circuit, you know, probably quarter inch, three eighths electrode stick out. 
and we ended up with uh, quite a bit of wormhole porosity, uh, worm tracks, chicken tracks, you know, whatever you want to call them. All right, so just to give you a little perspective, here's where I was welding, like I said, about three eighths, and that's roughly where I should have been. Okay, the manufacturer for the Select Arc 730, they say three quarter to one inch stick out, right? And that's quite a bit. Uh, so we, I mean, we really got up in there, three eighths, kept it nice and tight, and you can see the results. Okay, that's something you don't want to do with gas shielded flux core. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how voltage is going to be a critical component in this. So we're going to go ahead from 25.5. Uh, let's go ahead and just raise it two volts. We'll go up to 27.5 and just kind of show you the difference. What that's going to do is anytime we increase our voltage, we're going to increase our arc length and the width of the puddle. Okay, so when we increase that arc length, what that's allowing to do is it's allowing to nitrogen to get into that weld pool. Once that nitrogen enters the weld pool, that pool starts to solidify, that nitrogen wants to get back out. And that's where we're going to get those worm tracks in there. Alright, so just a real quick visual on how voltage works. Okay, let's say I've got 18 volts right here. Okay, now watch the diameter of that light. See how much bigger it gets? Okay, so that's, let's say that's about 27 volts. Okay, and this isn't a direct size comparison. This is, guys, this is just going to show you what happens when you increase your voltage. So, voltage low. As I increase my voltage, that puddle width is going to get much, much wider, okay? Alright, so we maintain the proper contact tip to work distance, but let's see that you know what result changing our voltage did. Overall got a pretty decent weld. It uh, not the effect I was looking for, but we still have you know enough in there to where you know it, it could be considered a problem. So I've probably got about three eighths of an area right in here. Kind of shallow. Okay, and then right here, you know, there's a pretty decent size, almost like a, a crater in there. So, I mean, there you have it. You know, you, you change your voltage, um, or you decrease your contact tip to work distance, or you store your electrode, you know, improperly, uh, you know, you're gonna end up with wormhole porosity. So these are just a couple different methods. You know, make sure when you're dealing with this stuff, use good wire. Uh, Make sure you're, you know, as far as technique, you're maintaining the correct uh, electrode stick out recommended by the manufacturer of that electrode. And, um, you know, make sure you got the, the settings correct. You know, make sure you're following the settings from the manufacturer and you should be able to, you know, mitigate your chances of getting wormhole porosity in your, in your welds. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope you guys were able to learn something from it. I appreciate you guys following along. Make sure you guys like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, and until next time, make every weld better than your last. All right, so here's another segment of HelpMeWeld.com. So make sure if you guys want to be featured in this section, post to hashtag HelpMeWeld.com on Instagram or on our Facebook page. You can go in there and just post in the regular group. Also, try to make sure to give us as many parameters as you guys are using. So travel speed, travel angle, uh, wire feed speed, voltage, you know, type of, type of wire or electrode you're using, diameter, gas, gas flow, all those things. So the more information you can give us, uh, the more areas we have to kind of help you out along your journey. Okay, so this week we are using the Facebook group, weld.com, and today's submission is from Justin Cope. Looks like he's doing some gas metal arc welding. I don't have a lot of details to work with here. Uh, the first thing, Justin, I would tell you, clean your base metal. Okay, a lot of folks, they underestimate the importance of cleaning your base metal, but it, it you know, it helps out tremendously. So go ahead, try to take the mill scale off, dirt, oils, anything like that, go ahead and remove those. Uh, as far as your welds, they're not bad. I would say you need to readjust your, your settings a little bit. And it also looks like you're dragging this. Now with gas metal arc welding, you're gonna want to push that. You're gonna get much better penetration uh, and you're gonna get a better bead profile. Uh, additionally, clean in between your passes. You have some excess spatter here as well. I would say your wire feed speed may be a little too high. And it also looks, um, just by judging for the amount of uh, silicon islands you have on here, that your gas may be a little too high for you as well. And that's causing a venturi effect to where 
the gas pressure is so high it's actually creating a vacuum and pulling impurities and additional contaminants from the surrounding area into your welding pool. So try that, clean your base metal, double check your settings, back your wire feed speed off just a tad, and I would set your, your CFH for your flow meter uh, about 25 CFH and you should be good to go, man. Um, keep us posted, let us know how it turns out for you if we can be of any further help. All right guys, so remember, if you wanna be featured on helpmeweld.com, go ahead and post a video or a picture along with as many details and your parameters as possible in our Facebook group, uh, or you can also post to Instagram and use help me or hashtag helpmeweld.com. And until next time, make every well better than your last.